So let's start with our previous example. And from our front panel, create a new enum. Recall this is in the ring and enum palette. We're going to choose an enum. And remember that there's two ways to set up the entries in an enum. We can use the text tool to type them in directly. Or we can right click and choose edit items. What we want to do in this example is modify our previous example not only just to use an enum, but we're also going to change the functionality. We actually want five states in this example. We're going to start with initialize. We're also going to add acquire, analyze, save, and finally exit. What we want to do in this example is basically have the system go through each of these states. Start with the initialize, then go to the acquire, then to the analyze, and then to the save state. And much like in our previous example, we're going to have the save state prompt the user to ask whether they want to rerun or not. If they do, it will go back to the initialized state. If they don't, it will go to exit. So now we've got our enum on our front panel. If we find the terminal, we see that we of course have it on the block diagram as well. So let's make some deletions here in our previous example. Let's disconnect the shift register, both the initialize and the writing to the right side shift register terminal. Let's also create a constant from our enum. A little bit more room. Right click on our enum, choose create, constant. We see that it's chosen the default value, which of course is the one corresponding to zero which of course is initialize. And initialize, much like before, is our first state. So that goes into the initialization of the shift register. Now we've seen the important benefit of using an enum here, which is that our case structure has now automatically chosen the names corresponding to our enumerated elements. So if we go to our initialize case, we see that we have here, this is case number percent %d. Now an important thing to remember about enumerated controls is that we can use the format into string but not, we don't want to show the decimal representation. We want, in fact, to show the text representation of this. So if we use percent %s instead of percent %d and get rid of our number sign, what we're going to see now is that when this case runs, it's going to say, this is case initialize. And it's going to put that in our one button dialog box. Now, because enumerateds are fundamentally numeric, we can still use the increment value here. However, it's a bit confusing because it's not immediately obvious which case is which. If we were to increment initialize by one, it is going to go to acquire. But if we were to edit our elements and change the order of them, then the increment is not going to be as intuitive as it would appear to be now. So instead of the increment, we're going to actually delete that entirely. We're going to use a constant. We're just going to use the control key and drag our constant that we've created here. And we're going to send the initialize case to the acquire case just by wiring a constant in. In the same way, we could have done the same thing in our previous example. Instead of doing the increment on the integer number, we could have instead put, used the constant and gone from step 0 to step 1. It's particularly beneficial for ease of programming and for debugging to use the constants for enums whenever we're doing this particular method. Because we can immediately see that the initialize case goes to the acquire case. It's all clear. It's all in English. Let's go through and delete our extra cases here. We're going to delete the acquire case. We're going to delete the analyze case too. We'll recreate those. So now we just have our initialize case. The only thing missing to do is to connect up the right side of our shift register to the output of this tunnel where we tell it where to go next. So now we've got our initialize case going to the acquire case. We're going to again right click and choose duplicate case. So now we're in our acquired case. So we still have the same benefit as we did before. Because we're not using a simple string constant, we're using the format into string, we don't have to make any modifications here. But we do have to choose, instead of going from acquire to acquire, which naturally would form an infinite loop, very dangerous, we're going to send the acquire case to the analyze case. Again, duplicate this case. We're going to go from analyze to save, duplicate it one more time, and again we're going to have our save case. 
Now remember that the save cases where we're going to modify, just like we did in the previous example, our one button dialog to be a two button dialog and make a decision as to where to go next. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to expand our string constant here, ask whether they want to rerun, replace our one button dialog box with a two button dialog box. Maybe move things over a little bit so we have a little bit more space. And of course, use the output here to decide where to go next. We're going to need a case structure in order to implement different code depending on the choice made by the user. So if they say true, that's saying yes, they want to rerun. So instead of going to save, of course, we go back to initialize. And the loop is not stopped. Because we have our false case, which is empty, we're going to remove empty cases, which will get rid of that. Duplicate cases again, so that if they say cancel, which means they don't want to rerun, then it goes to the exit case. We have a choice here in the way we architect this. There's two ways to go. We can have this say immediately to stop the loop, and then in effect we never get to our exit case. Or we can alternately, and in general this is probably a better choice, we don't stop the loop. Instead what we do is we use the exit case, we create it manually, and we automatically close the loop inside that exit case. So let's do that. So instead of duplicating this case, let's just add a case after. Because it's going to choose the next sequential value in our enum, it's automatically chosen to be the exit case. Here it is important that we stop the loop. And we could put in some sort of message. For example, we could put in a one button dialog box that says goodbye. And finally, there must be something connected here, otherwise we must choose use default if unwired. Again, the actual value which goes into the shift register in this last step does not matter because the loop, of course, is stopping. So let's run this code now, make sure it behaves the way we wish. We start off, we see we're in the initialize case, and our pop-up indeed says this is case initialize. Initialize goes to acquire. Acquire goes to Analyze. Analyze goes to Save, and we're prompted to rerun or not. If we say yes, we're back again to the Initialize step. Initialize goes to Acquire. Acquire goes to Analyze. Analyze goes to Save, and this time, of course, we can say Cancel which bounces us to the exit case and stops the loop. One further modification we could make here, and it's probably worth mentioning, is that we don't have to make a decision each time through the loop whether or not to stop the loop. We could take advantage of the fact that we know which state we're in and totally remove this decision making from within the loop. One way to do that would be to use a comparison function Take our current state, create a constant on the second terminal, and say if the current state equals exit, then stop the loop. And in that way we're only going to stop the loop if we're actually in the exit case. It's a matter of personal preference how you program this. You might say it might be a little bit easier to see um, the ex actual program flow if everything is sitting inside the loop, but it's up to you to decide how it works. In order to test this, we just need to go and clean up all the wires that were left when we deleted that tunnel from each of those cases. And now if we run it, we're going to see exactly the same behavior. So initialize, acquire, analyze, save, we can rerun. Initialize, acquire, analyze, save, and if we say cancel, we end.